everybody, it's Alice K. Ruckelhaus from Threshold of Hanani, and I'm going to bind a journal, which I think is probably the thing that's scariest for most newbies. So I want to try to keep a binding video up fairly close to the top of my videos. I did one recently with a different journal with this one here. Um, so I'm going to probably post this like a month or two later after I'm doing it just so that we keep those close up to the top. I hope that makes sense. If not, it really doesn't matter. Um, anyway, so I'm going to show you how I bind my journals and I learned this way from Gail Agustinelli. I think I've probably changed it a little bit, but I can't remember exactly what changes I've made. So just know that, you know, the basic technique I learned from her and I think a lot of other people use this same technique. So what you need is your journal and you should preferably take out any like cards and stuff that are in it but I'm gonna live dangerously today and I'm gonna leave them in uh, it's safer though to take them out it's just that I've got them all placed in there already and so I shouldn't have done that and I usually go through and I am very good about taking them out and everything but I just don't want to forget where I've put these because this time it's really important to me where those particular cards are so I'm gonna do that without it I'm gonna set this aside for a second while I show you what else you need you need I'm using a piece of wood. Piece of wood works really, really well. This one happens to be from the side of our house up in the mountains. My husband brought it down for me um, because he thought that it would be perfect, and it is. The other thing that you can use is a large catalog or a paperback book. It needs to be large enough, though, to lay the whole spine of your book on it. Okay, so a fat catalog is really good. It needs to be something that's like probably at least about that thick okay so I use this wood that works really well for me um, it's got almost a little bit of a cradle in there too which is really nice but again that's not necessary just a flat paperback book is fine or a catalog okay then the other things I finally got smart enough and I put everything together that I need in a little box so I just keep all those things together so what you need is you need four of these large binding clips okay you can get those at walmart or a stationery store and i'll include a link down below i only have three i used the other one for something and never brought it back bad 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 um, so i need to order more but i've done this a lot so i'm gonna go ahead and, and do it with three but you really do want four you do not need sewing machine needles. I just keep them in here because otherwise they get lost. Okay, you need some kind of binding material. This is one of the things that I use a lot. I also use twine, which is all mixed up with this stuff here right now. Um, I'm probably gonna use twine for this journal. Um, no, actually, you know what? I think that this goes really well with it. So I'm gonna use this one. It doesn't matter. The twine, I like the twine, it's easier to work with. And if this is your first journal, I would recommend working with twine. It's it's easy to knot and everything else. This is a lot harder to knot, it's a lot harder to get beads onto it too. So I recommend twine for the first time. Um, I have my needles for binding that I bought in this cool little container. I had been using, you've seen me use, a rusty old needle for a long time and I finally got embarrassed by that and when I was looking for needles to post a link for y'all the last time I did it I found this and I love it um, I think it was like I don't know $6.99 or something and it has a bunch of cruel embroidery needles in it okay so these are great what you want is at least one of these they have a big hole here to hold your binding material and they have a blunt tip all right but I think it's great to keep them in this so I've got one of those and then the other thing that you need is an awl all right this is an awl you use it this has a really sharp hole, sharp end and you use this for punching the holes that you're going to sew your binding materials through okay we're gonna put this aside now there are some that have a bulb handle I would recommend those rather than this one. I'll eventually get one of those when I'm ready to bite the bullet. They're not very expensive. It's just that I already have this one. Oh, does this have something inside of it? No, I guess not. Okay, this was just a really cheap one that I got. And it works, but it would be a lot easier if you had that big handle on it. You want something that's really sharp. It helps to have 
something like this. You see how that's um, got a different texture there? You don't have to have that, but that lets me know that I've pushed this through far enough because this is the biggest area of the awl. I want to make the hole as big as possible. Okay, so what you need to do first, and I'm going to set this aside now. Okay, so what you need to do first is go through your journal. In this case, my pages are all the same size, so I can basically kind of tamp it down so that none of the pages stick up farther than the cover and you know, make sure that they're all down here at the bottom too, okay? Um, oftentimes, I have journals where the pages are different sizes, like this one. And so you want to go through and set those up so that they are where you want them. Some of these smaller pages I have down low, some of them I have up high, like this one here, okay? So those are all placed ahead of time when you're going to bind your journal. Of course, you don't want your pages to come up above or below the top of your, of your cover. I mean, that would be kind of weird. Okay, so you want to do that. You want to go through and make sure that nothing is going to get caught in your binding. Okay, so that's why I say, you know, it's a good idea to remove any cards and stuff before you bind. So what I'm going to do instead of doing that is like I want to make sure that this ribbon here is pushed out to the side this way so that it's not going to, when I'm done binding it, I'll pull it back up because I want it to stand up. But for now, I want it out of the way here so that it doesn't get caught on anything. And I'll push these cards over as far as I can. Okay, one of the things that you need to look for the most to be careful of getting caught in the binding is any, um, see these are paper bags, isn't that fun? <laughs> I'll post the, thrip, the flip through below because I'll be doing the flip through. I'll post that before I post this, probably a couple months before I post this. Um, okay, so this has a really big pocket. Actually, it's a um, kind of like a big belly band. Um, so I want to make sure that those things aren't slipping over here. I want to make sure that this string is pulled over there. Um, if you have any belly, belly bands, those are the things that you really want to be, not belly bands, um, flips, like fabric flips, which I do have a couple of them in here, so you'll see when we get there. But those are the things that you do really want to be careful of making sure that they don't get stuck over there. Okay, see, so I'm going to push these in. I'm going to push these over. Okay, that one. This is a prayer journal, and I have a lot of different, like, cards, prayer cards in there that have different really cool prayers. Okay, so we want to make sure that's pushed over plenty. Make sure that this doesn't fall through the belly band. Okay, that's pushed over. Okay, I don't want this to come in there. I'm not even sure where this is from, so I'm going to set it aside. Or I think it was from here. I have a little tuck here, so we're just not going to stick that in there for now. Okay, here's the be here's the fabric flip. So I'm going to flip this out here. I think I had already gone through a few days ago and done that, and I forgot. Okay, this one here is also a flip, but it's not going to get caught in. It's paper, so it doesn't fall over so much. Okay, and then I have a lace flip here. I don't want that to get caught in there either. Okay, all right. So nothing's gonna get caught in there. So I need to, I think I moved some of those pages. Yep, so here they are sticking up again. So I need to push them back down. Some of these pages just really, really want to poke out above the top. Okay, so I've got it like that. Now, we have to bind it closed. If we open it, then everything's not laying flat against the spine. This is kind of the hardest part. And really, you guys, even though I say this is the hardest part, and I know people are afraid and everything, what I want to show you is that it's not difficult. Okay, I'm taking a lot longer to do it because I'm showing you how I do it, but it doesn't take all that long to do and it's not all that hard. Okay, now I may, may say differently if some of my things get caught in here. Okay, so you want four to six of these little clips. Okay, and so what I usually do is, I've got to get these set the right way. Okay, if there isn't anything that I would ruin 
you know, by clipping it here on this side. Sometimes there are, um, sometimes there are tabs and stuff that I don't want to ruin, so I just do it on the top and bottom. But if there aren't any on the side, then I push this in, push this in in the middle up against the spine, and then I'm going to use this clipper. I've got to close this as much as I can and clip this. This is a little awkward, but it's okay. It's not, like I said, it's not that difficult. Okay, I'm clipping it down towards the bottom. So the other one is going to be up on the very top of the book. Okay, so again, I'm pushing that spine in right here. Okay, I'm closing this as much as I can. Oops, I should have had this ready, sorry. Uh, there we go. And then I'm clipping this. Here. It's not going to ruin the ribbons, but again, that's a good reason to take your tags out before you bind, just so that you won't be clipping the ribbons. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to take this third one. Since I only have three, see normally with four I would put one on the bottom and then one on the top side. But I'm going to put this, I'm going to close this like so. I want to get the center. Ooh. I got that. I don't have this on the well. That'll still no. It won't. I have to have it. You have to have it open to the center. So I've got to flip this one open. What's going on? Oh, I guess I didn't get the center here either. Okay, so we're gonna start over. I've never had that happen before. You want to make sure that you can get to the center because that's where you need to bind it, right? Okay, so I've pushed all this in. I'm checking just to make sure that I haven't moved any of the pages. <laughs> okay, you make a mistake. So okay, that happens and so I'm not I'm not going to edit that out. That's going to be part of it. Okay, so again, I'm going to do this from this side. <laughs> this time I have these ready. Okay, I'm going to actually put it up towards the top rather than the bottom and then I'll do the other one on this side of the journal at the bottom. Okay? So I've got that. I'm going to push it in again. Make sure that it's pushed in all the way there. Oh my, get this right, okay, and then I'm going to clip it, I'm going to make sure that I get all the right pages <laughs> so I can open up the center. I'm closing it as much as possible though while I'm doing that, okay, because I want to have all those pages stuck together down here by the spine, okay, then I'm going to open this side, and since I only have one clip, I'm going to put it right here in the middle. Um, but I would recommend putting it, since I have this one that's on the side, up at the top, I would put it down here towards the bottom, and then you're going to have another one up at the top. So I'm going to put this like in the center, I think, just to hold this in place. All right, so what I was just doing was pushing those pages back in to the spine, okay, and I'm doing that, okay. All right, so now I'm going to keep the book closed as much as possible. I need to stand up to do this. You're probably going to see part of my fat stomach. <laughs> oh, well, we're being real here, right? Okay, I need my wood or a paperback or um, a thick catalog. All right, I'm going to turn it angled because that just makes it easier for me to do this. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in here in the center and I'm going to find approximately the middle. Some people measure. I don't. I really don't think it's that important to be exact. I'm going to stick my my all in. See right there in the spine. Okay. But it has to be pushed together as much as possible when you do that. Okay. So I'm going to push down through the spine. If you don't have it closed like this, then you're going to end up not getting through the center of the spine on all the pages. It might be on this page that's in the middle, but not all of them. This is a really, really thick book, so I've got thick paper in there. Um, so now I've got it in there. It's through a lot of that. You can see, maybe, you can see that tip right there coming out. Okay, you want to have your hand, I cannot emphasize this enough, you want to have your hand away from that. You can put it like this so it's going to come out between your fingers, but just make sure that you don't have your hand like this because it's going to suddenly come through there and you could poke that all right through your hand. Okay, so I'm pushing it in, making sure it's not tearing any of my pockets or anything. Okay, so I've got it up, I don't know if you can see this or not, I've got it up to this 
part here that's textured. So I know that it's made the biggest hole possible. All right, so then I'm gonna pull it back out. Okay, so then, again, standing this up, I'm gonna go halfway between the hole that I made, which isn't perfectly centered, that's okay, but about halfway right there, okay? And I'm gonna close this before I try pushing it through. Okay, this is where it would really help to have the bulb. It's easier to hold on to. So I'm pushing it through. I kind of feel the wood through there. I'm not sure if I've gone all the way through or not. Yep, I did. Okay, it's right there. I'm gonna keep my hand away from it, or I can go like this, but it's easier to just go like this. Make sure that you're not gonna poke yourself through and have to have a trip to the hospital. The hospital's right across the street from me, <laughs> but I don't wanna go there. Okay, then halfway between this hole and the bottom, approximately, again, not measuring, closing this, and the exact same thing, okay? You're gonna push this through as hard as you can. I feel the wood, and so I'm going to push that through the rest of the way. It does take some strength. I do have to say that. Okay, so I'm pushing that through like that. Okay, and then you wanna hold on to this. Don't just pull it out, because if you just pull it out without holding on to it, you're gonna tear your pages. Okay, you wanna leave the clips on for now. Okay, let's put this aside. I'm gonna put it on my sewing machine. Okay, so I can sit back down now. I'm gonna set aside my wood, because I don't need that anymore. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is cut whatever our binding material is. And I'm gonna try not to hit the camera here and shake everything. Okay, so I need to find the end of this. All right, and I want to do, um, I think Gail does like three times as much. I do four, um, just cause I need extra. <laughs> it's just how I work. And I actually, you know, you can see I'm going beyond the top and bottom of this when I measure it. I can always use any extra that I end up cutting off. I can use that in some Franken paper. <clears throat> and of course, wouldn't you know, the wrapping thing is gonna hold me up here, so I'm gonna cut through that. Okay. So you want, in my opinion, four times the length of your book. And I'm not saying Gail's wrong. I'm just saying this is what works best for me. She's more talented. She can probably do it with three, but that's harder for me, okay? So I'm done with that and done with the all. And the best thing is put them away right away, right? <laughs> That's what I don't do. And so then I end up having to clean up my whole craft room just to find something like this, which my craft room really needs cleaning up. So I'm, gonna, I'm thinking of doing a series of videos of cleaning up my craft room and show you the stuff that I have, not just like an after picture. So this is four times the length of the book, okay? So now we're gonna take our needle and we're gonna thread it. And whatever you're using is probably gonna be easy to thread through. I have to use a threader when I just thread normal thread. But this, I can see, well, there's a big hole and there's a big piece of string. <laughs> okay, my eyes are really bad. Okay, so you're gonna stick this through the center of the book, through your center hole. You wanna kind of close it, but it doesn't have to be closed all the way to get it through all those pages. Now, sometimes it's a little difficult to get it through all those pages, and I'm having a little difficulty right now. There we go. Okay, I want to leave about this much hanging out of the bottom. What is that? That's about six and a half inches. Okay, so about six and a half inches hanging out the bottom, and that's because I'm gonna hang charms and stuff on the bottom of it, okay? And Gail does that too, I learned it from her. But again, she she's so much more talented than me, so she can do it with less binding material. Okay, then, this is, this is probably one of the hardest parts. I'm gonna stick it through the hole here. If you have this closed when you stick it through, then it should go through to the right place. We'll open it up and look, yep, there it is. But sometimes you have to poke around a little bit and even put your finger in there to get it through the right place in the pages. Okay, and it is sometimes a little hard to get it to come through. Oh, you do want to be careful not to tear, but you know, it's it's really not going to show if you like make your hole a little bit bigger or something. 
I know it kind of shows right now, but it never shows at the end. Ugh. Okay, this is what happens sometimes. It happens quite frequently, actually. Okay, so when I pulled that out, I saw that this was bent, so it was actually kind of trying to get three layers through. So that's what was making it difficult, and now it should be easier. There we go. Very nice. Okay, now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that this is nice and tight. See how this is sticking out like that? That's not good. But I wanna be careful not to pull up on this end here. So I'm gonna hold that with my finger and my thumb and I'm gonna pull this so that it's nice and tight. What's going on? There we go. Okay, nice and tight, and I've still got my nice long tail here. Okay, then I'm gonna go through that center hole again, close it up as much as I can to go through and make sure that I'm getting through the hole, not making a new one. <laughs> and kind of wiggle it a bit to get it through there. Now if I really tear this up, bringing it through, then I'll put a piece of lace on the end of the binding to cover it, but hopefully I won't. You've already got this piece going through there, so it's a little bit harder to get this one through. And don't feel, you know, don't worry about it. If it is, you just go through and make sure you check everything here. So you've got three pieces basically going through. Okay, so we've got a pull that through there we go now it came through okay again I'm gonna hold on to this tail because I really want it to be as long as it is and I'm gonna pull this tight again now don't pull too tight you want it to be snug but not too tight because if you pull it too tight then you'll tear your paper okay so that's good that's tight right there okay now I'm gonna bring it up through this last hole the bottom hole and there we are it's coming through so I'm gonna pull it, and again, I'll probably struggle with it right here. Okay. It's not difficult per se, it's just, you know, you have to kind of fool with it to get it to go through. Okay, so I can feel it coming through some of those layers. Come on. There we go. Yeah, talk to your books, it always helps. Okay, so then we're gonna pull this through. I wanna check the back. Yep, okay, see it was kinked, so it felt like it was all the way through, but it wasn't. And this part here is coming away again, so I wanna pull this up, which gives me a little bit more of a tail. Okay, and then we're almost done. Oops, don't fall off, please, needle. Okay, and then we're gonna hold this tail down here tightly. I wanna check the back again to make sure everything's tight. Oops, nope, that bottom part isn't. So let's pull that up. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna take our needle, we're gonna kind of pull on this, not, not pull it, but just like bring it taut, and then stick our needle through here underneath this loop that we've already got on here. Okay, so I'm gonna put that through Again, it would be easier if I didn't have stuff in that pocket, but it's not impossible. And if you're a beginner, please do, do take everything out of your pockets. Do what I say, not what I do. Okay, then you're gonna use this. You can use your needle if you want, or you can take it off the needle at this point and make a knot, okay? Then before I close this, I'm gonna use, this is Gail's idea, I just love it. I'm gonna use some more lace um, in the center of it just to add some more lace to the whole thing. And it would be good if I use some fabric scissors, but let me see here. Here's some fabric scissors. I've got some of them hanging on my boom to keep it from, to keep the camera from getting closer and closer and closer throughout the video. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that in the beginning. I just love this. I'm gonna take the needle off and not lose it. Okay. I'm gonna lay it, center it there, and I'm gonna tie a knot here, and it just looks really cute to have that. Isn't that cute? And sometimes I make it a lot smaller, but this one I just wanted a bigger piece. And then double tie that. Now I'm gonna be closing this, so I'm not gonna do this right now, but normally I would be, you know, letting this rest after, after all the hard work and go to bed um, and I would put a bit of glue right here on this knot with this. You don't really need to if you use twine, but I still do, just for safety's sake. 
but you definitely do need it with this because you don't want it to come untied. Okay, so I would put a little bit of glue there because I'm going to leave it open, but I'm not going to leave it open, so I can't do that. Okay, then I'm going to work on the on the journal a little bit more. Then I take these guys off, take them off carefully so you don't tear your paper or ribbons or anything when you're doing that. Okay, and then before I do anything else, in fact, before I put the glue on the center there, I'm going to go through and make sure that nothing got stuck in the center. <laughs> and if it did, then you'll see why you should take everything out. Okay, so this is fine. This is fine. That's fine and fine. I'll tell more about these in my flip through, but you're getting a little sneak peek here. There. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. That didn't fall over and get stuck in there. That's good. And it is really important to go through and check. And, you know, if you've got things like that, you want to flip those out so that they're going the right way. This is a prayer about um, bringing it into abortion. Ooh, I'm going to have to glue that down because that lace is coming off there. Okay, there's the center. Nothing got stuck in there. I'm, the main concern is my fabric flips. Okay, so when I get to those, that's where I'm going to go take a deep breath. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yay, it didn't get caught. It stayed where it was supposed to. So that's one. This flip is fine. This fabric flip is fine. Okay, so we're probably fine throughout the rest, but since there's only a few pages, we'll go ahead and there we go. Okay, so that is all bound. And then what I will do is I'll add beads and danglies to the end of this. And you can see this one here is plenty long. It probably is. Yep, it's at least, you know, so you're probably safe using three links. I'll be cutting this off after I put my beads on it because this one I'll have dangling down a little bit farther than the other. And, um, and then I'll just either throw the leftover into my, um, what you might call it, my Franken paper stash and in which case I would probably like cut it into smaller pieces or I'll use it for something like this is long enough to tie on a card to use as a card tie or something so it's plenty long for that so it won't go to waste all right I'm not worried about going to waste but Gail's probably right three is probably long enough I just I always do four okay so that's it I will um, I'll try to remember to record this when I add my danglies to the bottom and if so, I will leave the link in the description box. If I forget to record it, then I'll leave the link to doing the danglies on a different journal. Okay. <coughs> all right. I love you all. I'll talk to you later. Let's pray for each other. Okay. Bye-bye.